Ask George is brought to you by International Cricket Tours. ICT, a cricket travel specialist with decades of experience taking supporters all over the world. Get in touch with their expert team today to plan winter trips to the Caribbean, Pakistan, New Zealand, as well as the Women's Ashes. Love cricket, love travel, choose International Cricket Tours. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Ask George. Uh, England win by five wickets. It wasn't as easy as some thought, but it was done in the end. Uh, the Indoor Kite Society asked, are there any words to describe Joe Root that have not previously been used? Probably not. I mean, I think I've described him as low ego, low testosterone, low risk. Um, I don't know whether I've done that before, but I, yeah, it was a really classy professional innings. And I thought that they should be pleased that they were prepared to win ugly. Uh, that's not something that they've done that much in recent times, but uh, six in a row in England, uh, professional performance, five wicket win. Yeah, no surprise at all that Joe Root's the guy that sees them over the line. Do you know what I really liked about his innings today? He's a very, very muted celebration of his half century. Because it's just like that, not, not, job's not done, job's not done, job's not done, he's there for a job. And he wants to see it through. And that's what he did. It, it was certainly um, delivering on their promises of being a bit more ruthless, I thought. Yep. You know, really, you know, making sure he was there at the end. I thought that was really, really good. Danny asked, is it me or did Sri Lanka need a ball change? It's you. No, sure, a ball change might have been useful, but I, I look, we talked about that in some detail yesterday, and I think we covered it. Schlenke didn't score enough runs on the first day. That's, that's really where it was lost. We've just heard Chandamal, funnily enough, say the tail enders didn't stay with them for long enough in, in their second innings, but you know, they are bowlers. So, like, I, I, honestly, what, what did the top order get in the first two innings? I mean, it was six for three, for goodness sake, in the first. And 113 for seven. You don't win many tests from that. That's where the game is decided. I um, I think I think you're absolutely right. I think there's a lot of people at this moment dwelling on how yesterday started with Shrunk in the field. Um, and I think, obviously, yeah, they could have tightened up there. But I think they, they started on the back foot. But it's fine. Shrunk is just like, you know, we're slow starters. Uh, we, we take, you know, we live life at our own pace. And I'm sure that we're going to bring the party to Lords. And... It's going to be great. Chandler just said they were over the moon. And, yeah. and you get that. They, they Honestly, I was at that game with New Rose. And they were raw, not just undercooked. So you know, to get within five wickets is not that bad. I just I just wish the international schedule was a wee bit different and they'd had a warm, an extra warm-up game or two. And I, I think they're a decent side. They're far, far, far better bad inside in particular than West Indies. I came to watch... Obviously, trying to play, but I was also excited about watching pass ball. But whatever pipe ball is, is it's it's very slow and ponderous and doesn't seem to change much and feels very dogmatic. Or maybe Shrunk was so good that actually they kind of stopped England playing the way they wanted to play. Well, a bit um, of that for sure. And also, it's not a lovely wicket, is it? For, for entertainment. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's good. no criticism of the ground stuff. It's been a dog of a summer. But it, it was a very, very slow wicket. Bobby Smith asked, by being so competitive in an away fixture, have Sri Lanka taken the throne, rumoured to be held by England, of being the saviours of Test cricket? Um, so if you watch, I obviously I watch pretty much every time a, any Sri Lanka anywhere in the world picks up a cricket bat or ball. Um, that The way this Test panned out is very similar to the way Test kind of panned out in in gall and dry shrunk and pitches in terms of it kind of all it's kind of stay in the game keep yourself in the game till that kind of final i don't think quite get to the final day but that final innings and the final day and the hope you can kind of spin them out of it weirdly i thought the whole game had a very shrunken feel to it whether or not they're the, they're not the saviors of test cricket but i mean they they came within a, a series win against new zealand last time round to get to the world test championship and it got the whole nation kind of reignited back into into test cricket. Coming to, I was telling you guys off air yesterday, a series in in England for for Sri Lanka is absolutely massive for you know for for, for Sri Lankan cricket fans all around the world. I know loads of people who are flying in from all over the globe to come like just for one day at Lords. 
next week. That Lord's uh, test is absolutely massive for them, like massive for shrunken cricket culture. Um, we, we, it's too small a, a cricketing nation to kind of to save it, but we can definitely be kind of there. We can play a kind of Chewbacca esque role in in in, um, in trying to save it. But I, I still think maybe Basball might still be the last hope. Who knows? Not the last hope, but it actually is probably in the hands of administrators and accountants, sadly. Um, test cricket can be saved, of course it can, it's brilliant. Uh, you just need to prioritise it a little bit more and make more long-term decisions. And, and a lot of that stuff comes down to about uh, share in equity, doesn't it? Uh, particularly, for example, the ECB on this tour could give a percentage of the broadcast income they receive in these tests to the visiting country, and that would make a big difference. The Occidental Tourists asked, what have England gained by having Mark Wood play in three consecutive tests only for him to get injured? Where is the blooding of new talent made possible by forced retirement of Anderson? Well, wait, no, they have won them. That's something, isn't it? Isn't it? Um, shall I give you a stat? How many winning tests did Graham Dilly play in? Now, I reckon Graham Dilly, in fact, you want to answer, have a go answering this. I know it's a long time before your turn. Graham Dilly was a really bloody good bowler. Yeah? I reckon he maybe played 42, 43 tests, something like that. How, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have some 20%. Okay. Do you want to have a guess? Uh, 10. He won two. He was in two winning sides, and one of them was uh, Leeds 81. England winning six in a row, don't take it for granted. And in doing so, they've won a series against West Indies. Bloody hell, that seemed like an impossibility when I was young. Um, and also, yeah, they have. I mean, look at all the young players in this side. Jamie Smith's playing his, what, his fourth test. Uh, Gus Atkinson just come into the side. Uh, Pennington has been in the shake-up. All sorts of people have been. You can't just change a team immediately. And I think, you know, people want to see Mark Wood, don't they? I mean, you'd never see a fast bowler like Mark Wood in England before, I don't think. Or playing for England before, rather. Um, so I, I, you can't just put him on ice and say, we'll wheel him out for the Ashes. It all matters, and there's a World Test Championship to play for. So I don't agree. Obviously, there's a balance. And I think I said yesterday, I thought Ollie Pope got that spot on in this game. They took him out of harm's way. Immediately, he had any sort of issue. But these things do happen. For my two pence, I think professional cricketers exist to play cricket, right? If you're a train driver, you can't just say, no, I need, I need to do the big Christmas rushes. I need, I need to do rush hour, right? You... you you drive your train, you play your cricket matches, you know, uh, and and on top of all that, I just think, you know, it's essentially is a kind of, to be cynical, it's a TV product. It's a, it's a spectator product as well. You want your best players playing as much and as, as often as possible. You wrap people up in cotton wool and what happens inevitably when you need them, they get injuries, they pick up niggles. That, that's the... It's the nature of of life, but particularly the nature of being a fast bowler as well. So I just think if you're fit, you should play. Um, it puts bums in seats and eyes on televisions. So completely agree. Do it. I think that's spot on. I think if you forked out your hard earned money and you don't get to see the best players on the park, it's the same. You know, there's been criticisms about the move to to look to the future and say you're not respecting what's in front of you. It's a you know, he is. One of England's best bowlers. He's definitely the quickest. So play him. Yeah. That's, that's spot on. Cricketer subscribers can gain all our analysis and reports from international and county cricket for just £3.99 a month. Uh, check out the link alongside the video. Or the scorer asks, who decides in test matches who the player of the match is? Oh, bollocks, I forgot. I, I meant to check. I can't remember. I mean, it was, was it someone in one of the broadcast teams? It usually is. It might have been the Sky commentary team or something like that. I actually don't know, sorry. But it's usually something like that. Sometimes we get to choose uh, in the, the written media. Usually we're uh, the player of the series, actually. Who'd be your player for match for that? Oh, I think it'd be hard to look beyond Jamie Smith, wouldn't you? Because they won. I mean, yeah, is that, that's fair, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 I think so. Um, yeah, I think I'd, I'd, I'd still say Jamie Smith, yeah. I think they now change that there's a you the coach picks the opposition player of the series. Yeah, sometimes yeah. So I wonder if they have a, a might have a say in the player of the match. But anyway, it was Jamie Smith today and well deserved. I think. Yeah. Uh, Scott McKenzie asked, which captain gives away their wicket more cheaply, Pope or Stokes? 
while the former captain just keeps holding it all together. I mean, it's such a good point. Joe, Joe Root played the innings of a leader. You don't have to be a captain to be a leader. And I think, you know, I've kind of actually written a draft piece about Ollie Pope, which I think I'm never going to publish because it doesn't feel like the day for it. But I'm a bit concerned. I mean, his, he is a bit frenetic. I'm not positive he's a number three. He averages 42 as a number three, right? But of his last, most recent 23 innings, he's reached the, uh, 63 times and he's reached 25 in about half of them. I think he hasn't done in 12 of those. Um, Is this the kind of difficult middle career stretch? No, I'm not even sure we're in middle career. career. I think the thing is that they tried to make him feel more confident by making him vice captain and moving him to three. And actually maybe they just painted themselves into a wee bit of a corner by doing that. I don't know that he's... My own view is he hasn't completely nailed it at three. Um, he's very nervous. But, you know, he did play a great innings only a few tests ago in Hyderabad. It was crazy good. He got a double hundred a year or so ago against Ireland. And he got a hundred against West Indies in the last series. So you could very, very coherently come back at me and say he's doing great. He's averaging 42. He's got five centuries and number three. I, I, I'm, I think he's really, really talented. I'm just not sure he's a number three. I think he's... You, we heard Shrunken players say they want to play county cricket. Maybe he needs to go play some domestic cricket in Pakistan or Sri Lanka or India because I think he's got serious, serious, he doesn't like spinning. And he might just do, I don't, I, I don't know how he'd ever find time to do it, obviously, just saying stuff. Um, to, to kind of throw ideas out there, blue blue sky thinking and all that. Um, nice to see some of that. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's, that's reasonable. He probably needs to play. So, I mean, he did play for Surrey at the start of this season and he didn't actually do great. But I don't think there's a lot of doubt about his, you know, the high ceiling he has in this game. Just to go back to the question, it does sometimes feel that Stokes and Pope are playing gesture shots and I would rather they just tried to win games. Not, not try and show people this is how England play, this is how aggressive we are. You know, obviously there's a lot to like about Ben Stokes and the way he does for English cricket. Of course there is. But, you know, he wants to be averaging as a, as a test player 35. Honestly, he's good enough to average 45 to 50. I genuinely believe he is. Um, and he won't care because they're winning, and that, of course, is what matters. But very often, he's making a statement to his team, and I don't think they need it. And actually, sometimes I think the statements are really unhelpful. Winning still matters. I thought what Joe did today, Joe Root did today, was uh, pretty much perfection. Um, but you wouldn't, you would struggle to clip it up for an Instagram reel. I had a really interesting thought before, which is unlike me, uh, before this test match. Dan Lawrence was obviously the, a makeshift opener in this match. Mm -hmm. Ollie Pope, when he was first moved to three, he was a makeshift number three. I wonder at that time, there was a possibility that they could have given Dan Lawrence that role at number three, because he was in and around the setup and instead he'd lost his place. Bairstow comes back in. In another world, is Dan Lawrence a uh, test number three? and being given as much chance as Ollie Pope? Well, he could be, yeah. I, I can see why they didn't. I, I don't necessarily think they were wrong. I just, look, Joe Root didn't want to go back to number three, which is probably, was one obvious option. And Ben Stokes, who wasn't bowling, I still think has the technique to do it. Um, but he didn't want to, and, and, and the reasons are all fine. You know, Joe Root is obviously prolific. Uh, ben Stokes, I think, has scored more runs at six than anyone in Test cricket history, by the way. Uh, and he feels it's perfect for him because he can either rebuild or kick on. That's reasonable. Um, I, I think, actually, Jamie Smith's got the technique to go three, but he, he can't do that. He's keeping. He can't really go above five, I don't think. So um, we are where it's we part, are. It's part of the problem in that this episode of Test Cricket, um, Pope was coming a bit too early. Yeah, but if you're three, you've got to be prepared to come yeah. in really early, haven't you? I mean, I think... It, in the old days, you know, you used to look at it and think that if you came in three in Test cricket, you used to be able to open maybe at county level. I mean, go way back, you know, with Tabaret and people came in at number three. But maybe that's old-fashioned negative thinking. It probably is, isn't it? I don't know. I'd be interested to hear what other people think. You could make a very simplistic uh, stats-based argument to suggest that Ollie Pope's doing a really great job. And equally, you can make a really simplistic stats-based argument to suggest he isn't. Does that mean that you probably need more data and actually just stick with it and see how it goes? Well, that's a reasonable uh, yeah. answer because I don't think there's anyone absolutely banging down the door. Now, look, I would have been tempted to pick someone like Josh Bohannon 
or Sam Hain as a kind of statement pick at three and, and let Oli Pope and drop him, to be honest. I, I think I said that after India. I would have done that because I think the side needed to be shown that there were different ways to play. But they're kind of learning that anyway, aren't they? They are adapting, they are evolving, they are improving. Um, but yeah, I, I'm personally not still completely convinced by Oli Pope, but um, yeah, it'd be great if he proved me wrong. He's definitely got high ceiling, definitely has the raw talent. Just feels a bit frenetic. With um, Mark Wood's um, injury, uh, Chris Wolf didn't look entirely comfortable when Gus Agnesson might well need a rest. Uh, politics and cricket ask, does Ollie Robinson have a chance for the Pakistan tour if Mark Wood doesn't recover in time? I think it's a really good question. I, I get the impression uh, that he doesn't, that he's not fancied that his stock has fallen to the point where they're not going to go back to him. I kind of hope that's wrong. I, I still... You know, I feel... Uh, It'd be great for the content, isn't it? It'd be for great. Oh, Ollie Robinson, yeah, yeah, Ollie Robinson in Pakistan content would be quite well, fun. You just want to hear his podcast together. Is that yeah, like, the Oli, Oli, Oli Robinson live from Lahore. He did bowl. <laughs> he did bowl really well in Pakistan last time. I, I, I just don't want to see it. I don't want to see any of them waste their talent. Not waste it. Not make the most of it. Um, I kind of hope there's another chapter, chapter to be written in Ollie Pope's test career. And I do think he's good enough and... Um, but I get the impression that they want pace. Look, Ollie, uh, Ollie Stone is the obvious um, guy to come in. He was in this squad and he's got the pace they want. But it, yeah, as you say, is Wokes okay? I mean, I thought he had a really bloody good game, to be fair. But he did look sore. And is Gus Atkinson okay? He's played a lot of games. He basically never played back-to-back -back games for Surrey, very rarely. And he's, and he's carried a hell of a workload. So they'll have to see how they are. But I think Sam Cook or maybe one of those Lions bowlers is a more likely selection than Ollie Robinson. Thank you very much for joining us during this uh, Old Trafford Test match. Thank well you done to Oscar. He, he's, he's, you're not making it to Lords, are you? You're not coming I'm to not, us. No. <coughs> you, you, you'll be there, then. I'll be there. Yeah. Oscar, you've done great. Thank you. Thanks a lot.